All right, here's the sisters. We are here, we are here, and I'm about to do my one year post hysterectomy update. I don't know which channel that I will be uploading this on, either Life With Us TV or Hista Sister, or it could be both. First, I wanna thank you all for coming with me throughout this journey. And not only have you all been supportive, you all trust me to give you the information that you said that no one else is giving out. And for that, I am forever grateful. So let's go ahead and get into just the recap on what happened and what I had. I had a total hysterectomy laparoscopically. The plan was to emorcelate the uterus and to pull it out through one of the little incisions that they did on my stomach. When I woke up, I found out that I had to be bikini cut because the uterus was too big. Post-op, I found out that my uterus was over five pounds. Luckily enough, my ovaries were in tip-top shape, so I do have my ovaries, so let's go from there. Over the years, and I would say it's probably been well over 10 years, I had fibroids. I just thought my tummy was big. I just thought I was fat in the gut area. The way my family is built, most of us carry our weight in our gut area and in our arms. So I never thought anything was wrong. And when I went to go get an IUD, they do an IUD under ultrasound. That's the first time that I had ever been told that I had fibroids. Insertion was fine. When you have that, you have to go back like maybe four weeks later so that they can check your strings to make sure that they're still visible. Within those four weeks, my strings had just totally disappeared. My IUD was being entangled into my fibroids. First thing I wanna talk about is weight loss. Where? Where, 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 like real talk. It's been almost impossible for me to lose weight and I just don't know what it is. You know, I, of course I'm older, I'm 43. I even went back to my keto diet, would lose five plateau. I went on a plant-based lifestyle. That actually had me gain weight because I was eating way more sugars and way more carbs. Now I'm back on a more carb-friendly um, diet. Losing weight has been almost impossible. I can also attribute that to the fact that I am working from home for the first time in my career because of COVID. So I don't get to move around as much. So what I do to make sure that I'm getting my exercise in is that on my breaks and on my lunch, I do walk my neighborhood and just complete that circle for the time that I have away from my desk. Second thing I wanna talk about, and I want to warn you ladies about this. I'm not sure if this is gonna to happen to you. I hope that it does not happen to you because I don't warn you. When most of us have fibroid issues and bleeding issues, we are depleting a lot of iron at a rapid rate to the point where our bodies just can't keep up. I was that person. So I've always taken um, iron supplements. After surgery, nothing, like nothing said, Lynette stopped taking all of this iron. So eventually, because my surgeon and my doctor, they were having me come back and forth for blood work and this, that, and the third. And he was like, whatever you are doing as far as iron goes, I need you to stop. Your ferritin levels are way too high. I overloaded my body with iron. So if you have this surgery, and this is a regimen that you were on before you went into surgery, please talk to your doctor about it. I didn't think about it. I just kept my regular regimen. I was just like, okay, let me take my vitamins. and Just, just never thought about it. No one told me. So the next thing I wanna talk about is feeling a little desensitized during, <laughs> after having a hysterectomy. And I told some, and I, I gave the analogy in my, one of my other updates that you feel like when you put fresh batteries in something, you know it's supposed to go mm, but you're just that mm. It kind of still is like that, but it has improved greatly. And when I say that, I mean that it's improved greatly from the last time, but it still isn't where it used to be. There are parts of me that sometimes is not as sensitive to the touch or I'll just say to the touch as it used to be before surgery. Like there'll be sometimes where I'm just like, what, what are you doing? Because sometimes what used to feel like a sensual touch kind of sometimes feels like a tickle sometimes. So that is very different. I, you know, I've talked to my doctor about it. They said that nothing's wrong. Like they, you know, did little tests and pricks and pokes around in there, but nothing has come up on their radar as anything that could be wrong. This just may be where 
I landed. Post out woes, I don't know. Someone asked me, did I have any intermittent bleeding after surgery? And I'll say like maybe within the first few weeks, I would have a day where I would look at my undies when I would get up and it might be like a quarter size spot or something like that. And the blood would look like it was kind of old. So it's kind of like, you know, surgery, blood is finally kind of, you know, trying to come out. But other than that, I did not have any major problems with bleeding at all. So I was thankful for that because, hey, after all of this we've gone through, who wants to bleed, you know? Someone asked, am I mentally okay after surgery? And because I've had my over, I do have my ovaries, mentally I feel the exact same. Matter of fact, I probably feel more mentally clear and in control more than I ever had in, have in my life. Like I feel like I've, I did the work, like Ayala Vanzant said, I've done my work. You know, I've I've gotten rid of this beast that was just like hanging over my head for so long. So I don't have to worry about that part anymore. It was more of just, just figuring out what this new normal is and just go with it. So I'm grateful that I was able to keep my ovaries so I did not have any like, I, I didn't feel like I was triggered into some kind of mental trauma or anything like that. So I was perfectly okay. The only thing that I will say mentally has been kind of challenging is just the entire environment that we are in. You know, we're slowly coming into a sense of normalcy with um, COVID or whatever. But when I had my surgery, COVID hit like two weeks later. And when I say it hit two weeks later, I couldn't even have a post-op visit um, within my three weeks in the office because it was so dangerous, so unknown that I couldn't even see. So can you imagine having a major surgery like this and your surgeon telling you, as long as you feel okay, I can't see you in the office because I don't want to expose you to something if I don't have to. That was a lot. That was a lot to deal with because you always want to have that reassurance that I'm doing okay. And I did not have a professional that could tell me that. You know what I'm saying? So that was that was difficult. Also, one of the things that I have been doing is I've been taking probiotics because for a period of time I was getting I was getting urinary tract infections. I've never had that in my entire life. Never, ever, ever. But because so many things had changed and my body was so susceptible to things that was happening to me. If I would go to a swimming pool, I would have one. If we would have sex too often in a little period of time, like if we were before breakfast, after breakfast, by that next morning, I could feel like it was coming on. Like it was a lot. So my doctor told me, said, just go ahead and just start taking probiotics and vitamin C. And that will, the vitamin C will help push it, push whatever bacteria is trying to grow out and a probiotics will kind of just keep you level. So that's what I've also been doing. And so far I haven't had one probably in like seven months. Now the question I had was, you know, how is sex? We did a whole video about that and it is, it's good. <laughs> I mean, it's like I said, it's not as intense as it was before surgery. The O's function the same. I don't always feel them the same. The results are the exact same. Just read between the lines. But what I feel and the results of what is happening sometimes don't match up. Like you'll look at the aftermath and you'll be like, whoa, but I didn't feel as intense as the results that I see are saying, <laughs> if that makes any sense. I, 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 I'm desensitized. I'm not as sensitive as I was. And because I know what that feels like, it's a little disappointing, but I do feel, you know what I'm saying? So don't think that I don't know, I can't feel what's going on down there. It's just at a lower level than what it was before. One thing that I am enjoying is, baby, I don't have those frequent trips to the bathroom. Sometimes to the point where I have to think about going to the bathroom because I was that person that one sip of water, 10 minutes later, I'm in the bathroom. If I was to get in a car and knew I had to go somewhere that was even 20 minutes out, I would stop drinking anything because before I got to my destination, I knew that I had to stop and use the bathroom. I mean, it was ridiculous. I never knew what that was for the longest time. 
I thought maybe I had something going on with my kidneys, all of that, you know, and I'm one of those people, I got good benefits. So if I think something's wrong, I'm going to get it checked out. No, nothing's wrong with you. The whole time it was because my uterus was so big that it's pushing on my bladder and it's making me go to the bathroom all the time. No sleeping through the night. Um, at night, I had a thing where I would cut off drinking anything after eight o'clock because it was a wrap, like you were not getting any sleep. I'm enjoying having to actually think about going to the bathroom. And when I say that, don't mean that I'm not going because everything is fine. It's just that I've been used to going so frequently that now that I can sit at my desk and it's like 8.30, 9 o'clock and I haven't gone to the bathroom and I'm like, oh, I gotta go to the bathroom. Day, it took me this long. Another thing that I am grateful for is that I don't have extra hormones pumping through my body. And what I mean by that is me having an IUD was a twofold thing. One, I didn't want children, never wanted children. And then two, it also helped with the bleeding. So now that all of that is gone, I really feel great in knowing that I don't have those extra hormones going through my body. You know, we hear so many bad things about, you know, birth control, birth control pills, anything like that. So I feel good knowing that I am free of all of that. Another thing, y'all, I didn't, I didn't know, and I, and I'm still confused because I read so many things and I'm told so many things. And the thing about me is the guy that did my surgery is not my doctor. My doctor referred me to this surgeon who is his good friend because he didn't want me to have an open hysterectomy. He wanted me to have an apostopic um, hysterectomy, which his friend does. So the information between those two sometimes gets, I'm not saying that they don't speak because <laughs> they do, but my surgeon says one thing, but my doctor is expecting another thing. And sometimes I don't know where that meets in the middle. So for me, I was told that because I am getting my cervix, oh, I forgot to tell y'all, I, I removed my cervix as well. So I was told before, because I don't have a cervix, I don't have a need for pap smears. I just need to come in for my wellness exam um, annually and my, my breast exams. And of course, you know, your mammograms. So I, boom, on schedule, I came on in and I had my wellness exam where they pretty much just tip, tap, top, tap, look around, take your urine and stuff like that, get your blood, do your mammogram, bam. One day I get a call from my GYN's office and he was like, you're overdue for your pap smear. And I'm like, I thought that was over. He was like, no, you still got a whole canal and all of that going on. We need to check. Like, it's not as thorough as a regular pap, but you still have to do that. So I came on in and he was like, yeah, like you're, you're, you are you still have a hoo-ha. You're supposed to come in here to get checked. Y'all, I'm still confused. Now for me, I never was settled with that you don't have to get pap smears thing. I've just been doing them out for forever and it just feels right for me to know that without a shot of a doubt, everything is fine. But if I was told that, <laughs> I'm so confused. Next thing is one of the things that I started experiencing after surgery, I don't know if it has anything to do with the hysterectomy or if it has everything to do with the climate that we're in right now, but I developed insomnia like a mug. Like to the point where I would just be up for no reason. Just, what the heck? So of course, you know, the first thing your doctors is like, you know, make sure your, your levels is okay. Make sure you're not showing signs of depression or anything. None of that. So then it was like, well, maybe you have sleep apnea. So I went for a test for sleep apnea. I ended up doing that and boom, they said that I had a very mild case of sleep apnea. So that could be the reason that I have insomnia because my body is just not getting its proper amount of rest and then it just does not know when to shut down. So whatever. So I ended up getting a sleep dental device, not a CPAP, but a dental device because that was recommended to me because my case was so mild. So I've been doing that for probably about three months now and sleep is a little better, but I can say, I think what makes sleep a whole lot better for me is that I take sea moss gel in the morning and it seemed like since I added that to my regimen, I just, I just, at night I just go to sleep and that has helped 
a lot. So I don't know, y'all let me know if you all have had this surgery and you started experiencing insomnia. Like your body just would not shut down, even though your mind was like, your body just was like, oh, okay, I'm up. <laughs> it was, it's weird. Another thing that I do not like, and you know, I've done, I do Kegels and stuff like that. And that does help. But we have you ever heard women say they feel empty on the inside? I definitely feel that. And for me, I go back and forth for trying to figure out, is it the empty feeling or is it the feeling of not having all of that pressure down there? Because sex used to be painful. And you know, like you would be in certain positions and you would just be kind of just waiting for it to hit and cause you some pain and things like that. So now it just feels like it's just, it's just free. If that's a word that I can use, like it just feels like it's, it's, it's just like, a canal and that's that's it because I mean basically essentially that's what it is and for me I feel it my husband says it feels no different to him another issue that I had not so much now but this was an issue that I had and we talked about it in this video but going forward we're talking about the flood and how sometimes you feel like it was a little dry down there but then you would get this flood and then my body went back and forth for a very long time with being a flood, then being, okay, then a flood. Then it would start off as a flood and then right in the middle, it would be like, what the heck is going on? No idea. Now that part is over now, but for the longest time, it was almost like my body was confused. Like, <laughs> like, do I want to have the flood on? Do I want the sprinkler system on or do I want it off? or whatever. Thankfully, that has kind of like just settled into just being pretty good. And another thing that I wanna talk about before I go is, I am so happy to say that I can go on vacation and do not have to prepare for a crime scene wherever I'm going. Do you know how embarrassing it is to have to go to like a hotel, get on a cruise, fly internationally, and you're always thinking about whether or not you're having a breakthrough and you're going to bleed everywhere. It is so liberating to just put on a bathing suit, go out in the ocean, be on vacation, be spontaneous. Like you just don't have to plan for a mishap because you have taken care of that. Baby, it is the best. Another thing, stomach pudge. My stomach is still big. It was big before surgery. It is big after surgery. The only difference is it's not hard. It's not firm. Now it's just kind of just, it's just kind of loose in all of this. So I talked to my doctor about it and he was like, you know, you've been stretched out for so many years. Like you have, you, you have had the equivalent of being pregnant for probably over 10 years. Like you've had a five pound baby for over 10 years. So he was like, my suggestion is that you go and you talk to a cosmetic surgeon to see if a tummy tuck could be something that could help you out to get, um, to actually cut that muscle, bring that muscle together so that you don't have like, I just feel like my stomach is just like putty. Like it's just all over the place because my muscles are just so stretched and bowed out. So I went for that consultation and he, he said it. He was like, yeah, your muscles are trash <laughs> and we can, we can do this, but you will never have a flat stomach because he was like, and he got me to stand up and, and hold my gut all the way in. And he said, this is as flat as your stomach is going to ever be because not only is your muscle stretched out, he was like, you, you are just stretched out. Like your body has compensated for the crowding that it's had all these years. And he was like, I can definitely help you. And I would definitely have you looking good. But he was like, if you want that perfectly flat stomach, you're not gonna get it. And I was like, that's fine. I mean, hell, it'd be better than what I got now. But here's the problem. They won't cover it under insurance because I don't have any of like the itching and the like, not getting infections and things like that 
down there because I do have a push that hangs over my incision of where they brought the um, uterus out. I don't have the itching or the irritation and getting the infections and things like that. I don't have that. So insurance won't take care of it because they consider it cosmetic right now. If it ever comes a time where it's not the case, insurance will cover that and go ahead and get me nice, right, and tight. But other than that, you know, that was a, let me see what the quote, I think the quote was like 13 to $14,000 to do a tummy tuck, tighten the muscles, and do, um, do a little bit of sculpting on the love handles. So yeah, well, so you sisters drop down below. Let me know how you all are doing from, by this time, I know a lot of you all that were coming through doing the research before surgery have probably already had surgery. And I wanna hear from you. I wanna know how you are doing. <music>